In the previous part of this training, we developed a new scenario and we placed the player's train on the track. In this part, we're going to continue that process. So we're going to select the same route that I called scenario testing. And when we click on the scenario button, you see we have a brand new scenario, scenario creation one. That's the one we created in the previous part. Again, we will click Edit, and after living through the startup, we are viewing this time the scenario marker for our new scenario. And there's our train that we placed last time. Now, every train in RailWorks needs a driver if it's going to move. We're pinning out the tools and picking this icon that looks like a little head in the tools menu. Click left click on it and then left click on the engine and that icon is placed over the top of the engine indicating to us that there is a driver on board. However, this driver needs to be told a certain amount of information and for that we're going to use the timetable view. There are many ways of giving that information but timetable is the newest and I view as the best way of doing it. Left click on that icon and our window will change. We see two windows. The left hand window is a map, 2D map of our route. We can scroll out or scroll in using the buttons. Right-clicking allows us to drag the map. And if you have a center mouse wheel, you can throw that to while you're on top of the map to either magnify or zoom out. On the right side, we have our programming stack. To start off, let's click on that icon that looks like our driver. It right now says services one. This is called the start time, but it does more than that. We're going to change the name from service one to something that will give us a little more information. In this case, we're going to call it the driver train. Now we need to deal with that little checkbox right there. Once that's checked, the player can move the train, otherwise the computer will be moving the train. And this is called the priority. We're going to pick low speed freight. The higher up on that list, the higher the priority that that train will be given. Every train needs a destination in RailWorks. We click on that icon, it gave us the destination command. That shows up in our program stack. Now we've got to provide information to that piece of the program. Clicking on the icon in the program window. We now go over to the map and we click on our destination. Now, you'll notice that I'm going to choose the north end. but. See how the north end is grayed out? You won't be able to select any item that is still gray. So continue to magnify. Now you notice it's white and it should be selectable. And there it is. Now it's important you close the program window right there before you do anything else once the command is complete. And you'll notice that a red line has been placed on our map. This red line is the path that the computer assumes our train will be traveling. Unless we have manual switches along the way, that's the path that our train will take. Let's zoom in because the only place where there's an option for path is in our middle section of the route. Notice that the red line it lies along the main. 
I want the train to travel along the passing. Therefore, I have to insert another command. Coming over to the command list here, I'm clicking on this little red flag. That is the waypoint command. We've got to tell the waypoint command what point. Clicking on the red flag in the stack, I can now select the destination for the waypoint. Left clicking, you can now see that the path has moved from the main over to the passing. It's always a good idea to save your program often, and we can save directly from the timetable view. Clicking right here, we get the dialog answering yes, we've resaved the scenario. Clicking OK at the bottom of the timetable, we return to our editing view. Now that we've supplied the minimum amount of information necessary, let's take a look at the, ru the run. This area that I've circled right now is an area that most programmers agree you should stay well away from. It creates more problems than it solves. So if we want to see it, let's use the standard run start. Save changes. Yes, why not? Saving as often as possible is a wonderful idea. Now, one of the problems that you'll have writing a scenario is you'll be viewing the route many times. And as such, it gets rather boring. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get through the scenario more rapidly than real time? Well, the reason why I had you click the async keys at the beginning of the scenario process was to take advantage of a fast clock built into Railworks. Take a look at the clock running on the pop-up window on the left side of the screen. Seems to be running at a normal rate. One second in real life is one second on the screen. However, if we click the asynchronous keys option, if we hold down the control, the shift, and hit the five key, suddenly time will run in the scenario five times faster. Take a look at how the clock is moving now. Well, the train is still moving along at a moderate rate, but it looks like it's speeding down the track. Hit Control Shift 1 and we're back to real time. This could be a wonderful advantage on a longer route. For this one, we could probably live with real time. Well, here's the point where we used our programming waypoint and the train has been programmed to move on to the passing siding. It's doing so. Well, we're going to use Control Shift 5 again to quickly move down the passing siding. And Control Shift 1 returns us to real time. Any number between 1 and 5 is the multiple of time, so Control Shift 3 will run the clock three times faster than normal. Oh, reached the end of the route. And at this point, we want to return to the editor. Rather than clicking the close button, we're going to go to the bottom of the screen and the fly up, click the little globe, which is the world editor. That moves us back into editor mode. But right now, we need to select scenario tools right here. Once we say yes, we'll be back into our scenario editing mode. And in the next part, we'll be adding some additional train traffic to make the scenario somewhat more interesting. Hope you'll join us then.